Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, today is Wednesday, April the 14th, and it's 9 50, I'm sorry, it's 8.55 a.m. Yeah, I've been now out, out a couple of days. I had to go somewhere Monday, and it kind of wore me out real bad, so I had a bad night Monday night, and I rested in bed all day yesterday until I had to get up and take my dog out. And going out always helps me. But um, anyway, I, I wanted to, um, I was praying about what to put up today because, you know, I get a variety of things that come my way. And I got to thinking about all the new people that have signed up lately. And I noticed a few days ago there were like 28 new people. So, or maybe it was 18 in the last 28 days. But anyway, and then I know there were some before that. So you've missed a lot on my channel unless you've been in and out and didn't really subscribe. Well, anyway, that's okay. But um, I don't know if you're aware that on this channel... We believe that there, we know that there are two raptures. I call them raptures. They're harvest. The Lord, in the message he gave me in 2016, he called them harvests. Barley harvest is first. It's just the bride and a few others. And all the innocents, that's babies, and like mentally retarded adults that cannot make a decision for their self, for the Lord. Oh, this, I saw a article yesterday how in California there's a county, let's see, L.A. County, they have a program called Homeward, Homebound, Homebound, not Homeward Bound. That's a dog movie. <laughs> homebound. Well, they just decided to go in on these people who can't make a decision for their self or can. This two, they told of two, they look to be maybe in their 20s. They called them girls. They're young. They were screaming, no, no, I don't want it. And they gave it to them anyway. And that is, that just, oh, I, I was like, Lord, you cannot hold them responsible. And I'm like, help me to deal with this. Because nothing unholy will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, there's a whole lot more I could tell you about this. I haven't even really gotten into it with all of my oldies <laughs> but goodies subscribers. I mean, about the time loop, going back in time. Because... When I was thinking about this a couple of months ago before I ever heard about the time loop, this thought popped into my head. You know I'm taking you outside the time. Who's to say I won't put you back in the past? Something like that. I didn't write it down. I just pondered. I pondered on it. I was like, Lord, could you really put us back in the past? Could we please blow up the vaccine factories? <laughs> you know, it's just a wish. <laughs> because, oh well, I better not say any more about that or I might get kicked off. So just let's just move on to what um, the Lord led me to do today. I wanted to find the message on the two raptures. Or the, or the actually he spoke of three harvests. But the grape harvests are the ones who don't even make the second rapture and they lose as it could they some people might get beheaded before the second rapture depends on where you are 
what kind of country you live in, how communistic they're going to be about it. You know what they want you to take and, you know, that that's probably saying enough right there. But anyhow, I just thought, well, it's the ones that missed the second rapture and they're going to have to choose worshiping the beast by doing what he wants or get beheaded. But lately I've learned that it could happen before. So you make sure your faith is that strong. Getting beheaded is like, honestly, it's the quickest way to go. You don't even feel it and Jesus will be there to hold your hand or to welcome you. I don't know how it'll be. He may be standing there with his arms open. There may be angels lined up in front of all of the guillotines. I don't know, but you will know where you're going the second you close your eyes and open them right back up again in the, in the heavenly, up in heaven. All right. So I opened up my book. My little old, this is my old journal. From this message goes all the way back to 2013. And now I understand why the Lord said to prepare your babies. Because I thought back then, the, the rapture, the rapture, didn't know about two yet, was going to happen anytime. The way messages were coming out, everybody was taking them as any time, any day now. So I thought, you know, why the push to prepare your babies? Well, those babies are seven, eight, nine. They're of the age of accountability now. All right, so let me go ahead and share this message with you. For those of you, who pro probably most of you have not heard it. It was done on an old computer whose camera didn't work, and I had to do it in a slideshow format. Okay. This, he woke me up the morning of August the 14th, 20. 13 Wednesday at 1.01 a.m. I wrote message from God, but it's from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who is God? Many people are abusing God's grace. They are taking it for granted, believing the lie once saved, okay, they are taking it for granted, believing the lie, <clears throat> once saved, always saved, which gives one permission to act like the devil, yet maintain his right to be in the kingdom of heaven. I want my bride to be spotless. I want my bride to cleanse herself, stop sinning. You know what you are doing, and if you don't, fast and pray and seek my face. Seek me so that I will reveal to you what you must stop doing. People continue to sin and refuse to repent. This nation will endure much tribulation. It is my judgment on America. You are the Babylon that is spoken of in my holy words. And in quotes, I wrote America, but I think that was me. Oh, because I, I misspelled it. Uh, in the middle of the night, you're kind of tired. <laughs> okay. 
anyone who is truly sorry and repents, turns from their wicked ways, will not have their name blotted out of the book of life. If you have children, prepare them. Oh, that, that was weird. It blacked out again and it gave me a number and it was too fast for me to see it. Okay, that was weird. The other day I got a number and I looked it up after I did the video and I put it in the description box and it both Greek and Hebrew had to do with what I spoke about. All right. Sorry, Lord. I didn't catch that. Hmm. Satan is interfering in all kind of ways. You won't believe the trouble grafted in Team Jesus is having with getting a new computer, new enough memory to do what they do. Wow, it's unbelievable. All right. Okay, so if you do what you're supposed to do and repent of your sins, you will not have your name blotted out of the book of life. Well, see, the once saved, always saved doesn't go. If you're sinning and you don't repent, your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. One of the verses, uh, scriptures that can prove that is go to Revelation chapters 2 and 3. All right? Read them all. This is seven. It's the letters to the seven churches, and that represents the seven different types of churches that are going on today. Some people, scholars, preach that the one was way back in the beginning, the other one was next century or two, and the next one is the next century or two, and until we're down to today, and now we're all Laodiceans. I think that's the last one. Well, anyway, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure that's right. That is not true. The bride is the Church of Philadelphia. The only one Jesus praises for doing right. He says, you are weary. Um, oh, I'll have to pull it up. But anyway, you read chapters 2 and 3, and that'll talk about being blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life or having your camp lamp stand removed. All right. Revelation has a whole lot in it. It's coming to pass now, or about to be. If you have children, prepare them, even babies. Tell them about me. Tell them who I am and how much I love them. They must understand that I am their Savior too. And that I died to save them. I died for the sins of the world. Tell them how much I love them. I love you all so very much. Wow, that is so cool. Now I understand why he's stressed tell, telling your babies. Because we're still here. They're all at least eight years old now. Thirteen and eight, yeah. I added wrong. But they're at least eight years old now. And I want you in eternity with me. Study the book of Daniel, Psalms, and Revelation. It will help you know what things will pass. You will suffer much if you do not repent. So as to be spared from my wrath. That's the wrath of God actually happens after the second tribulation, the second rapture. But there will be tribulation between the first and the second. That will be the book of seals. So be sure to read chapter 6 also. 
um, you will suffer much if you do not repent so as to be spared from my wrath and your children will suffer with you were they not born into sin did they not inherit the sins of Adam and Eve as you did of course they did you will understand this all very plainly when you enter into eternity the children of back then are now of the age of accountability so if they're not repenting even though if they understand that they have to choose Jesus now at age eight and above and they do not they will enter into the tribulation okay with you if you are not part of the first rapture of course okay let's see did they not inherit the sins of Adam and Eve as you did of course they did you will understand this all very plainly when you enter into eternity I hope it will be with me your Savior Jesus Christ not many really know me they think they do but they don't walk through the narrow path I'm sorry walk through the narrow gate self denial is what I call for give up those things you know are sins seek me seek my Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for all my children you only need ask believe what my word says and ask for it oh have I have boy I didn't write so good <laughs> I have many gifts for you just ask me for them I want to give you whatever you ask that I know you can handle that's like the gifts of besides speaking in tongues which you get when you're fully filled with the Holy Spirit you can the gifts of healing the gifts of um, oh come on Lord give me my I need to help with my memory okay there's prophecy prophesying in tongues or interpreting in tongues that's mainly for people who go to church where there's a group all right you don't usually get up here on YouTube and prophesy in tongues and then interpret but it happens there's a few ladies who do it so there's other gifts you can look that up what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit okay and he says I uh, would ask that I want you I want to give you whatever you ask that I know you can handle trust me get this power from on high you will need it stop denying the power thereof and there's quotes around that so maybe he told me to put quotes there because that is in the Bible that's right from the Bible stop denying the power thereof you need to be able to say to the enemy greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and believe it with your whole being the Holy Spirit will enable this he is your helper he is your comforter your source of wisdom discernment and power you must repent and turn from your wicked and unbelieving ways or I will blot your name out of the book of life I will remove your lampstand 
churches as a whole need to repent. To do this or and do this churches as a whole need to repent I think it's to do this do it now you are running out of time it is nearly the midnight hour see a lot of the messages were coming across Jesus wanted us ready back then if you believe in me and prayed a prayer of salvation, then you must follow through with living the life that I have laid out for you. Stop believing the lie, once saved, always saved. It is true that no one can pluck you out of the Father's hand. But you can jump out. And all those scriptures you claim that prove that doctrinal lie, and I added, once saved, always saved, in parentheses, pertains to believers who walk down the narrow path. If you stay on the narrow path and do what Jesus wants, you will remain always saved. There are many false doctrines that can be proven by using a few scriptures out of context. This must stop. It must stop now. Lukewarm Christians are a dime a dozen. And I have quotes around that too. Too common, and I will spew them out of my mouth. They will not enter into my kingdom. These lukewarm Christians are the hypocrites that are causing my flock to turn astray. There is no love, no commitment. So if this doesn't pertain to you, then don't, don't let it offend you. But it will offend the lukewarm because they don't want to hear it. Okay, blacked out again. Huh? No number. What are you doing to my computer? <laughs> or what is my computer doing? There is no love, no commitment. They are keeping the lost sheep from wanting to have anything to do with me. First century Christians were not this way. They were on fire for me. See, pause. When he says they are keeping the lost sheep from wanting to have anything to do with me, it's because when they claim they're a Christian, like go to work on Monday, and they said, oh, we had such a great time at church yesterday. I met the cutest guy he was uh dressed to kill and they go on about him like they're talking about a movie star and then they treat someone bad and they say a bad word later people are gonna think well she ain't any better than i am what's the point of me trying to find out about that religion do you see what i mean that happens a lot i've worked a lot of places I've seen it I've seen it here unfortunate they received the fire from on high let's see the, okay the first century Christians were not this way they were on fire for me they received the fire from on high the baptism of the Holy Spirit this is how you keep from being cowardly, lazy, ignorant, and lukewarm. But even some spirit-filled Christians get lazy. They turn astray. You must repent and come back also, or your name will be blotted out of the Lamb's Book of Life. 
when I woke up on my hand was written to whom much is given much is required so I remember now he had woke me up twice to give me all this I don't know why I didn't write that that's why it's so long and then when I woke up and this was written on my hand I didn't remember it so he must have woke me up a third time at some point and and all I could do is grab a pen and write it on my hand and that's what I opened up to when I and, it, and there was a there was a, a look this was folded over can you see it this was dog-eared and I opened right up to it and I don't remember I mean I, I don't know if at some point in the past I said oh I want to share that again well I believe the Lord wanted me to share it today perhaps to remind some of the my uh, old subscribers not old in age you've been with me a while and maybe for the new who've never heard that yet or if you have you needed confirmation that once saved always saved is not true it is not true you must not rely on that even from the greatest of preachers that preach it okay repent of your sins make Jesus father and their Holy Spirit number one in your life seek the gifts especially being filled you must be filled with the Holy Spirit that's to go the first time I don't know about the second time but why not go ahead and seek for it ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened unto you these scriptures are true the problem is how many of you actually believe it how many of you have kind of sort of done it and didn't get it seek earnestly he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him and I have to admit I haven't always even when I've had this channel I haven't always been very diligent about seeking for something and then you don't hear and then you wonder well what's wrong with me why haven't I heard well because you got to get diligent about it that means pray and pray hard and often and when you can I know you work some of you still work Jesus knows your life he knows if you have little babies that take up all your time he knows work him in when you can pray while you're taking care of them talk to them about the Lord when you're rocking them the very first thing I ever said to my grandson when Lori put him in my arms I was sitting in a rocking chair and I and I started telling him a story once upon a time there was a man named Joseph and he took a wife named Mary and I don't remember what all I said but it was a story I was just making it up out of my head what happened and that's the very first story I remember telling my grandson when he was like I don't know she came as soon as she was well enough to our our uh, mobile home an hour and some away and I just that was just so precious to me and the way he looked up at me and he just watched me he was very alert and attentive very 
early on. Anyway, I'm going to end this here by pleading the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us and our devices and our internet connection. And with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you again soon.